Hi, this is Jonathan Williamson from CG Cookie, and I wanted to give a quick Blender modeling tutorial that actually came as a question from the community forums on how to create a bowling ball, or more specifically, how to create the finger holes in a bowling ball. And if we think about it, this is a little bit of a challenge because if we, you know, go with something like a UV sphere, then we have no good place to position these. You know, we could potentially, you know, extrude in a couple of holes here or something like that, you know, having adjusted the segments, and that might work, but it's still kind of messy and we don't have very good topology. Um, and additionally, you know, we could use, say, like a cube and we could use a subdivision surface modifier and we could go down and, you know, create something like that and then extrude in holes here and here and here. But again, that doesn't work all that well. There's no good way to do it. However, I did come up with a slightly different solution that I think works really well, and that is to use an icosphere. So we're just going to hit Shift-A, add in a mesh, and an icosphere. And this icosphere, we're going to bring up the operator panel and adjust the subdivisions either to 3 or 4. Um, I think we'll just stick with 3 for the time being. You can do either one. And the nice thing about an icosphere is that it is all equally divided into triangles. Now, normally this wouldn't be good for a hard surface model because of the fact that it's all triangles and they don't really divide very well once you add in a subdivision surface modifier. But in this case, since a bowling ball is perfectly round, minus the holes, it actually works out really well. So what we're going to do now is we're going to just go into edit mode and we're going to position the three finger holes, which basically is going to be right here. Uh, and then... Let's see, here, here, and here. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so if we then just like grow these selections like this, basically that's what we have. Let me go into face mode and then grow them, or we can just select these like this, and like this, and like this. And suddenly what we have is we have three roughly equal areas of which to then extrude in our geometry. Now, we're not going to do this exactly like this, so let's do this one at a time. Let's start by doing the thumb. So we're gonna grab this area, and we're gonna hit I, and we're gonna inset that, being careful not to adjust the depth. So let me just undo that, we'll inset this again. We'll get it to approximately the size that we want. Now, in this case, I'm just going to uh, just eyeball it because I'm not trying to be super precise. If you have an actual bowling ball, of course, you can get it as close as you want. Then we're going to move over to where the next finger hole would be, and we're going to inset that, and we'll do, say, something about like that, and then we'll grab this one, and we'll just hit Shift-R to repeat that, and then you can start to see what we're getting is we now have three separate areas that we can create our finger holes. Now, these might not be quite equally distributed, so it may not be quite ideal, but that's probably okay. From here, what we can do is just hit F to fill each of these with an ingon, such that they become totally flat. And what's nice about this is now we can inset this again, go in just a little bit. Or actually, no, before we do that, let's bring up the loop tools. So one issue that we have at the moment, and we can show this, is if we add in a subdivision surface modifier and we increase the settings, we're not actually going to get perfectly smooth circles here. Let me just delete these faces and you'll see what I mean. They're, oh, actually they look pretty darn close, but just to ensure that these are perfectly round, let's bring up the loop tools add-on, which is bundled with Blender. We'll just go right into edit mode, switch to edge select mode, and then just using our loop select with alt selection mouse, just select each one of these, and just hit W, loop tools, and circle. And it looks like it didn't actually change anything, so in this case we're good to go and we didn't really need to worry about anything in the beginning. But with these, we can then reselect these, we'll fill them, We'll hit I to inset just a little bit, and then we'll do it again. We'll push it in, and then we'll do it again, and press them way in, say something like that, and then maybe inset one more time just for good measure. And like that, we now have our bowling ball holes. Now, it's not quite perfect. You'll notice that there's a little bit of a dimple right here. It's, it's pretty subtle, but you can see it. But you could actually repo this. If we grab this now, let's add in another icosphere. And this time we're going to use four subdivisions. Oops. Icosphere, four subdivisions. Bring this over. Hit tab to go into edit mode. We're going to go into face mode. And we're going to grab, say, this face. And, you know, let's grow that selection once. So this will be our thumb hole. And then right down here, we can do the finger holes. 
So this, these might be, uh, those might be a little close. So we could maybe shift this down just a little bit. So you can see if we do the four subdivisions, we get a little bit more um, control and a little bit more flexibility as far as how far down or how far apart to actually make these. And then we just hit I, we inset these, and then this is a case where we would want to definitely select this one and we would do loop cut or loop tools and circle, just like that. And then we can go and we can select these and maybe this one we will scale in just a little bit more. And then we can select these, hit I to inset and push them in, add in the subdivision surface modifier, increase the count, and then probably, you know, we could go in, we could add another edge loop in here. We could hit E to flip the even either way. We could add in another edge loop right here. We could just bevel this and then maybe add in some creasing. And there you go. So there's a couple of different ways to model the holes. This one definitely works a little better. So I encourage you to use the four subdivisions. You're gonna get a little bit more control. You're gonna have a, a little bit denser geometry. So it's gonna be a bit smoother. You won't get the artifacts that we were getting in terms of the, the shape profile. Um, I'll just go ahead and bevel these as well. And then once again, select these edges, shift E, increase the crease on those. And there you go, there's a bowling ball.